Welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Nicole Petalides, live at the New York Stock Exchange. Time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Ben Lichtenstein will take us through the charts here to take us through the trades. Jessica Inskip, Director of Product and Education at Options Play. Great to see you both. Jessica, I know you're going to be talking about CrowdStrike, which in fact is looking at a record close today. But before we get to that, your thoughts on the records that we're seeing on the major averages. Did you expect that and where do you think we're headed? Yeah, I actually think we are, I'm still in bull camp, and I really think AI is going to lead this rally. I think it's revolutionary, and we are just getting started. And so that's really where the themes of the trades are today, and its earning season is certainly going to be the next catalyst, but I really think the second half of the year is set up, set up really, really well. All right. Well, I see the high of 302 um, on CrowdStrike could have a record close today. Tell me a little bit about CrowdStrike today. Yeah, absolutely. So I really like cybersecurity, especially as we have that artificial intelligence theme going on. There was lots of mention now of shareholder pressure in regards to AI. But if we look at all of the topics in Davos, even recently, it was all around AI. And so guardrails in cybersecurity is absolutely gaining momentum. There's higher demand, something we're looking for. And CrowdStrike specifically is a leader in endpoint security, but as well as cloud security. And that's going to be extremely important as these firms are making that decision, putting their toes in the water to expand their data to make these large language models. So altogether, I think cyber fundamentals are strong. It's It's got that increased security budgets from those companies who are looking to adopt it. Platform adoption shifts all the way over to the cloud. But CrowdStrike specifically, they stated they target a $13 billion total addressable market for its cloud security solution. And there's a 97% buy rating for all of the analysts that cover it. So definitely, Definitely, definitely echoes those all-time highs that we're seeing before. There's absolutely some room for momentum. The trade that I did give you today was a, a bull call spread going out to March 2024, buying the, the 290s and the 340s. That's a total cost of about 17.78, and your max reward is about 32.20. So the the risk versus reward is favorable, but no buying a trade like this while it's while it's it's reaching all-time highs does elevate risk and i want to exercise that caution yeah and it's amazing because the uh, ai chatter which started and you and you started that here with that chatter back in november of uh, 2022 and just sort of took off in 2023 and now it's interesting and maybe this will still be the theme for 2024. ben your thoughts on crowdstrike today yeah nicole crowdstrike uh Pretty good example of uh, a bullish scenario here playing out and very good reflection of uh, the fundamental narrative that Jessica just laid out. I like to look at price activity through the lens of auction market theory. The concepts, the principles state that we're always in one of two phases of development, either in that horizontal phase or that vertical phase, and we constantly rotate from one to the other. Now, this is a prime example thereof. If you look at uh, multiple time frames, you're gonna see this playing out on shares of CRWD. Let's just begin with the move lower that we've seen uh, since the, uh, over the last couple of weeks here, the rally that we've seen from 240 all the way up to 302, uh, a nice rally to begin the month of uh, January and you can see areas of consolidation where the markets pause and then transition back into that vertical phase where we rotate from one to the other. Now in this instance you can also see as you get out kind of a more fine tooth comb you can see three areas where this occurred in that big move up that we saw uh, again from 245 into that 270 area but just kind of taking a look at this on a whole you can see that we've now broken out of the range that we were in around 280 so we've now transitioned back into a vertical phase high conviction price activity the upside simply put bottom left top right we are in a very well-defined trend since the beginning of the year to the upside now let's step back because as you take a look at the rally we've seen off the fall lows from last year down around 157 all the way up again to this $300 level you can see that it's not just since the beginning of the year that we've seen that playing out on an easily identifiable basis sometimes more so than others but shares of CRWD a prime example you've got areas of consolidation that continue to form at higher and higher levels separated by this really well-defined vertical high conviction phase again you can see that's basically what we're in right now as we break away from 280 here let's break away from this four hour candle chart or this one hour candle chart to a uh, daily and you can see a similar pattern playing out now in this instance we're going all the way back to uh, take a look here all the way back to this time last year and you can see where the market has and continues to form areas of value in higher and higher levels so trend to the upside 
again, very much in line with what Jessica was saying, and it doesn't look like she's the only one that's very bullish shares of CRWD at these levels. Right. All right. As long as the trade's not overcrowded, we're good. Um, any final thoughts, Jessica? What a great point, Nicole. Absolutely. This is a momentum play. There's lots of momentum. The valuations are a little high, but I still think there's opportunity and great call out. Thank you, Ben. And then what about Microsoft? That's another name on your list today. Absolutely. Out of the large caps, one of my favorite, probably my favorite still, ironically enough, they're a leader in AI. And I really think we're just getting started with the AI revolution. We focused on the semis. We saw that certainly with NVIDIA. Now I think we're going to shift over to the cloud and those software solutions. But Microsoft is certainly interesting because they have a B2C and a B2B solution. We have seen the chat GPT take off and soar. That costs about $30 a seat. So there's some revenue that's coming coming in. But now we're moving into Microsoft 365 and the introduce of Copilot. And I'm really personally hoping we bring Clippy back because I think that would be a great way to bring in AI. But what I want to see is their forward looking guidance when we have earnings for Microsoft. I want to see the demand for Azure and Microsoft 365 because I do think that's what's going to be the additional growth aside from the pull forward that we're seeing with AI within Microsoft. So the way that I want to position this one, it's a different type of trade. There is higher implied volatility due to some of the news and of course earnings coming up so i'm going to utilize that volatility and sell a uh, bull put spread so i'm going to be selling the 395s buying the 380s collect about 500 dollars risking about 982. all right thank you for that uh, 397 today where do you think it's headed ben what are the charts telling you Charts telling us that we've seen trend uh, to the upside, Nicole, value moving higher, and as I always say, continuation more likely than change. We can establish some key areas to look at should we start to pull back, but at this point, no indication that that's happening. It does look to me like the bulls still remain convincingly in charge. In this case, shares of MSFT, a similar pattern as we just looked at with CrowdStrike, going back to the beginning of the year, bullish. Uh, areas of value that have moved to the higher, higher levels here. You can see that we started off the year down around 365, 366, we'll call it, all the way up to 400. Went ahead and identified some areas of consolidation that were forming at higher and higher levels. And even this morning as I was mapping this one out, we were actually pulling back right into this area here. And I was thinking, okay, not what the bulls want to see necessarily, but as long as we hold above 389, still very much supportive of, again, that narrative that the bulls remain in charge. And look what happened. We've been holding and are actually inching our way back up here as we work our way through into the uh, late morning trade here. Let's step away from the 30-minute candle chart, the move we've seen this year to the move we've seen off the uh, area where we were this time last year. Taking a look here now, daily candles, you can see on the way up, similar pattern playing out, areas of consolidation that continue to form at higher and higher levels. And then you can also see, much like we just looked at with CrowdStrike, how we're actually in a vertical phase. So we're breaking out of this range that we had been in around 373, looking for a new area of consolidation to form at a higher, higher level or a higher level in this instance, I would be very supportive of this bullish narrative. The value continues to move higher, but in this instance, a vertical type move is a high conviction move out of range, out of balance, in the direction of the trend we've been seeing over the last year. This goes all the way back to a weekly candle chart we have here, and we're talking about levels that we were trading back in 2018. Nicole, you can see four well-defined areas of consolidation, then it really speaks to the significance associated with this, again, very much high conviction phase that we just transitioned into a vertical phase right now, exactly what the bulls are looking for across multiple time frames. Yeah, understood. And look, Microsoft's been a darling. It's uh, arguably like one of the best tech stocks. It has served its shareholders well. Interestingly enough, early this morning, there was um, a lot of talk about a recent security breach, and it was about the executive emails and that there was a Russian hacker, an intelligent group, and they and the company actually confirmed this security breach, but somehow, uh, I don't know, it just didn't make big news and um, has been pushed aside. I mean, the stock's down a quarter of 1%, certainly not having a big reaction on this news. I don't love to hear news like this. Jessica, final thoughts on Microsoft. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe that's why that's not participating in the broader tech rally this morning, but that elevates the concern for stocks like cybersecurity. And to Ben's point with the technicals, the bull put spread is not directional. It's neutral to bullish. So it's profitable as long as it stays above that higher strike price. Important to note. All right, good.
Okay, good clarification there. And then last but not least here, as we take a look at Apple, we were talking about the Apple Vision Pro, which has had a huge demand, 160, 100,000, 80,000 for those headsets, very expensive headsets, even being sold now reportedly for um, double on eBay already. Um, in the meantime, Apple, hot or not? I saw a 195 price target from Bernstein today. Absolutely. I, I really like Apple, and I think there's some things with Apple we need to remember. On their last earnings call, there was an increase in services, and we didn't see that demand, even though they beat expectations. But that is a sticky customer that's being created. I remember looking at Apple many years ago when iPods drove the revenue. And what I'm, the point I'm trying to drive home here is Apple is a leader. They're an innovator, but they also have great management structure. They are known for giving us amazing reimagined tools out of the box, which causes that really, really high demand. So I don't want to put that past them. And with the great management structure, they were one of the few during the pandemic that did not overhire. Therefore, they already have that management and efficiency in place that other tech stocks had to adopt to. Now, if you remember last year or even the year prior when we were talking about Facebook, now now Meta, they were really focusing on the metaverse. Well, now Apple's focusing on the metaverse. And I really believe Apple will be a leader there, especially with the sales that you mentioned with the Vision Pro. And there's so much demand there. And we cannot forget the AI story that needs to unfold for Apple. That certainly will unfold for Apple. And once that happens, I really think there's some upwards momentum. But we do have earnings on February 1st. Directional trade on this one, bull call spread going out to March 15th, buying the 190s, the 210s, again, that favorable risk versus reward. It's costing me about $800. Max reward is 1200 Okay. Um, what do you think of the charts here? Look at the technicals for us, please, Ben Lichtenstein. Yeah, bullish, bullish here as well. Multiple time frames, pretty well defined here. Similar situation as we were just talking about with the other two names here. I wanted to begin first and foremost with a 15 minute candle chart, the rally we've seen off the lows from the middle of last week and these areas of consolidation that have formed at higher and higher levels. Nicole, let's identify, uh, well, what looks like a new area of balance that's forming right around this 194 area. And the reason I say that it looks like it's not really determined that that's established yet, but if you look off 186, 188, a very systematic approach. Apple's been on this uh, every $2 kind of staircase type pattern to the upside after coming off those lows again that we saw middle of last week down around 180. Now, it's not just on the 15 minute candle chart that we're seeing this pattern play out. Uh, here on the daily or four hour, I should say, you're going to notice here that it's a uh, kind of range bound, right? There's not a lot of conviction uh, associated with this price activity, mostly rotational around 185. This sort of speaks to the random uh, aspect associated with price going all the way back to really middle of June here. We've got a well-defined lower extreme from this fall down around 160, 165, and a well-defined upper extreme around 200. And you can see the momentum right now as we work our way through the middle of this range, 185. It opens up a door for a retest of that upper extreme. Let's take another step back here and show you what's going on with the weekly candle chart. I mentioned multiple time frames supportive of that bullish narrative. Taking a look here, this is another one of them. I want to show you what's going on here because you can see, again, I mentioned 185 a minute ago and how we've been kind of range bound, consolidating around that area, very random type price activity with those well-defined upper and lower extremes. But look at this lower extreme that we established and how it held 155 this fall. That's exactly what the bulls wanted to see along the pattern that we haven't seen where value continues to move its way higher and higher. So again, while we're balancing around 185, we're referencing 155 above that, still very bullish. But hey, the bulls, ultra bulls in the long terms that have been sticking with this one for a while, I want to see us post new highs here. Not only break out on that more intermediate short term time frame we took a look at, but here also on the weekly, take out those levels up around 200 new all time highs and supportive of the rally we've seen. This chart goes all the way back to the fall of 2018. Nicole, pretty well defined trend up here, I'd say. Okay, thank you for that, Ben. Great charts today and, and big names that people know. Jessica Inskip, final thoughts? Hey, it's earnings season. Really looking forward to see what happens with earnings season. But nonetheless, we've got a lot of data. We've got a Fed dependent, uh, or excuse me, a data dependent Fed, and there's a lot to pay attention to with the markets. But it's that AI story that I want to see translate across earnings and the data that we see from economic events. Great to see you both. Thank you so much for the big three today. Jessica Inskip, Ben Lichtenstein, big three.